Okay, so let's see if we can figure out how to solve this graphical problem about fractions. So what we have here is a portion of a circle plus a portion of all these squares right here divided by a portion of this rectangle right here. So of course you want to be uh, looking at the yellow uh, uh, pieces of each of these figures as the part and the white uh, pieces as the whole. Okay, so we have this circle plus this square divided by this rectangle. Of course, these all represent fractions. So if you think you know how to do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain how to solve this very interesting fraction graphical problem. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. The answer is the following, okay, three halves, or you could write this as a uh, mixed number fraction. So either one of these is correct. So if you didn't get these right, no big deal. We're, I'm going to obviously uh, go through this, but uh, you probably, one or two things um, may be going on. One, you may be confused about some uh, fraction operations, or two, you just don't understand the nature of this problem. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and clarify this, but if you got this right, Let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are an expert in fractions. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to this problem. And the idea here is to um, look at what's going on. Obviously, we have graphical representations. This is a... Um, effectively a model, right? And these are, you know, we're looking at things, if you recall, learning about fractions way back when you're in, I don't know, second, third grade, you were kind of like, you know, faced with little graphical models like this, and you had to figure out, okay, what's going on here? Now, let's just think about what a fraction is, okay? Well, fraction, more or less, is a part, okay, out of a whole, right? So, like here, for example, we have, let's say, a pizza, and it's uh, sliced up in four slices right here, right? So this yellow shaded um, uh, part of this pizza represents one. Well, well, represents what? Well, one slice out of four total. Okay, so this is one out of four. Now, some of you might be saying, well, I was looking at the white sectors, and maybe you could say this is like three out of four, but you know, I think that's kind of less intuitive. This type of problem, by the way, um, is uh, fairly common, you know, in more basic mathematics. So hopefully you understood what to do. But let's go ahead and um, look at each one of these figures and uh, actually assign an actual fraction to it. So here, this would be one out of four. So this represents the fraction one fourth. And here, what do we have? Well, we have one, two, three, four. Uh, uh, shaded yellow boxes out of how many? Well, there's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four times four is 16. So we have four out of 16 boxes shaded. All right, so that would represent the fraction four sixteenths. And then here we have what? One, two, three, four, five. Five times two is 10 total boxes and two are shaded. So that's two out of 10, right? Or two tenths. So effectively, this is the problem. We have one fourth plus four sixteenths divided by two tenths. So if you figure this part out, that's actually uh, very good. And if you didn't get the answer right, but you actually had the correct fractions, well, that could be a bit alarming as it uh, tells me that you need to brush up on your fraction skills. By the way, if you need help with basic math, uh, definitely check out my Math Foundations course. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below. It's just a, a, a three chapter mini course uh, it's kind of like a boot camp for basic math review, okay, to include fractions, decimals, all that kind of good stuff that you learned way back in elementary and middle school and probably forgot. But let's go ahead and continue on with the problem. So here, uh, the actual problem is going to be one-fourth plus four-sixteenths divided by two-tenths, right? So here we have the operation, uh, the addition operation, and here is division. So effectively, this is the problem. One fourth plus four sixteenths divided by two tenths. Now, when you look at a, a fraction problem or any problem in mathematics, before you start doing anything, you want to get the problem in its simplest format. All right. So is this 
current prompt in its simplest format? Well, no. Okay, don't even start anything until you simplify each one of these fractions. So let's kind of go through this one by one. So one fourth is what? Well, that is fully reduced or simplified, so we'll keep that one fourth plus four sixteenths, however, we can definitely reduce that fraction uh, to one fourth. And I'll quickly review how to reduce a fraction here in a second or simplify it. And then we have divided by two tenths and two tenths we can simplify to one fifth. So you don't want to just start a problem you know, without looking at each one, each uh, of the fractions or numbers, or even let's say uh, in algebra, algebraic expressions, you want to simplify everything first. That's why in mathematics, uh, you'll see uh, this uh, problem often is simplify. Okay, simplify, here I'm just my scribble scratch here, simplify the following, simplify this, simplify that, because you know, it just makes your life much, much easier. You want to make things as simple as possible and then do the work. Okay, so this is what we're facing right here. We have one fourth plus one fourth divided by one fifth. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next step. Well, the next step is we have to make a decision whether we're going to do addition first, whether we're going to start the problem this way, one fourth plus one fourth and then divide by one fifth, or we're going to go one fourth divided by um, one fifth, and then we'll add in that one fourth, right? So this is a huge area of confusion for a lot of students. This is what we call the order of operations. Now, what is a mathematical operation? Well, effectively, it's an adding, subtracting, um, division, multiplication, uh, powers. This is a whole topic in and of itself. So this little saying right here, PEMDAS, and there's a little phrase that goes with it, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, is kind of like our set of directions, okay, our guidance on um, what to do first. Okay, now I'm not going to turn this into a full order of operations uh, video, uh, but if you don't understand this, that's uh, what I would call a math 911 emergency. Okay, this is critical, but effectively, the P is uh, parentheses. Do we see any parentheses here? No. Okay. In other words, we don't see anything like this. So uh, we can kind of ignore that. E stands for exponents or powers. Do we see anything like two to the third power? Nope. Now the M and D is, we, we're going to take that as one group. Now we're looking for multiplication and division. Do we see any multiplication and division? Yes, right there. Okay. So this is what we're going to do first. And after we handle all multiplication and division, from left to right, we'll go into addition and subtraction. So um, if you had these um, fractions correct, but you actually did this right here, that tells me you need to review the order of operations. No big deal. Matter of fact, if you made these errors, I'm glad that you did because, you know, this uh, video is going to give you an opportunity to kind of, you know, um, clarify, you know, uh, you know, confusion that you may have, right? That's the, you know, when you do math, let me just say this real fast. When you're doing math and you get the wrong answer, you have to write out your steps because it could just, uh, the difference between you getting the wrong answer and right answer could be just this one little area of confusion, okay? That's why it's so critical to write out each step and pay attention. All right, so this is the problem that we're going to do. Of course, we're going to do the division first because of PEMDAS. So let's go ahead and take the next step. All right, so we got one fourth plus one fourth divided by one fifth. We gotta figure this out right here. So let's go and focus on one fourth divided by one fifth. What is this equal to? Well, of course, you need to know something about fraction operations. So one fourth divided by one fifth, we don't really divide fractions per se. What we do is change fraction problems into multiplication. And the way we do that is we look at the fraction uh, to the right of the division uh, sign. Okay, so here's the division symbol, and the fraction to the right of it is one fifth. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to flip that fraction upside down. Okay, when you flip one fifth upside down, you get five over one. That's called the reciprocal. You don't need to remember that, but just know that the fraction to the right of the division symbol, you're going to flip upside down, and then that division symbol is going to become multiplication. So the equivalent problem, okay, let me kind of erase all this right here now, uh, is the following. Okay, one-fourth divided by one-fifth is equal to one-fourth times five over one. So now we're going to go ahead and do this uh, problem right here, which, of course, is going to be the answer to this. 
All right, so 1 fourth divided by 5 over 1, what is that equal to? Well, this is super simple. When we're multiplying fractions, all we need to do is multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So 1 times 5 is, of course, 5. And 4 times 1, of course, is 4. All right, so uh, what we have now is 5 over 4. All right, so now where are we at? Well, we got to figure out, uh, you know, keep track of what we're doing here. So we just figured out 1 fourth divided by 1 fifth, and that is 5 over 4. So now our problem is down to 1 fourth plus 5 over 4. Okay, so now we're moving from uh, division to addition of fractions. And this is where a lot of um, students kind of panic. You know, they're like, oh, I got to divide fractions. I don't want to do that. Now, why are they saying that? Because they're, uh, you know, a lot of people associate uh, nightmares with fractions because they got to figure out what the LCD is, the lowest common denominator. Well, this particular problem, uh, we don't have to deal with this. All right. And why? Well, because we can add fractions if the fractions, we can actually add or subtract fractions if they have the same denominator. Okay. So here, uh, this particular case, we have the same denominator four and four. So we don't have to deal with finding the lowest common denominator. Of course, you're going to need to know how to do that. So when you have fractions that have the same denominator, you want to add them up. All we're going to do is keep that one denominator, which of course is four, and then add the respective numerators, the top numbers. So that's going to be one plus five over four. So one plus five is six over four. And here is basically the final answer. Now, if you got this answer, I would still give you a nice happy face. However, you are not done, okay? Because we always want to simplify your results. And this is an example of uh, simplifying or reducing a fraction. So six over four, what we want to do is look at the factors of a, uh, six and four, okay? i.e. Uh, numbers that when we multiply them together, we get back to this number. So six is the same thing as two times three. And four is the same thing as two times two. What we're trying to do is identify common factors. Okay, so you can see here, we have a two up here and a two down here. Although we have two twos down in the uh, denominator, you can already cross cancel uh, one uh, factor for one factor. Okay, so what we're trying to do is cross cancel like factors. In other words, we have a two here, a two here. These can go away and we're left with what? Well, we're left with the answer, three halves. Okay, so that is the answer. And I'm going to suggest to you that you leave your answer as what we call an improper fraction, where the uh, numerator is larger than the denominator. Okay, so something like one fourth is a proper fraction because the denominator is larger than the numerator. But if you chose to uh, change uh, this into a mixed number fraction, you can do that by dividing three. Uh, uh, by two. Okay, so you just do old school division here. So you can see this work and we get one and one half. Now, of course, I'm going to fully explain all this in my uh, math courses, but uh, here's one little tip. Okay, unless your teacher asks um, uh, ask you or tells you, hey, write your final answer as a mixed number fraction, don't um, just volunteer. Just make sure your answer is fully simplified. Don't go here and do this, okay? That's not good, especially on tester quizzes for two reasons. One, it's gonna cost you extra time. And two, I have seen so many, uh, you know, I've been teaching math for decades, thousands of problems where students will have the right answer here, okay, as an improper fraction. Then they go uh, change that into uh, a mixed number fraction and then they make a mistake here and then they turn that in. And then when I say they have it wrong, they usually have a look like this, you know, they're just so upset. I'm like, hey, you gotta listen, okay? Uh, you know, don't volunteer to take that step unless you are told to do so. Now, of course, you need to know how to do that. And sometimes you'll need to be able to um, uh, write your final answers as mixed number fractions, but just don't um, uh, volunteer to do so. Make sure, however, that you fully simplify, reduce all your fractions. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in basic math, check out these two courses right here. So the first is my Math Foundations course. This is a, a quick review of basic math. Now, if you want to review uh, basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I'm going to leave uh, links to both of these courses in the description of this video. 
All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.